hell, this camera is so clear. I wanted a machine to solve a Rubik's Cube using an Arduino, because from what I know, it's the simplest and easiest type of microcontroller to code. I didn't think it would be too difficult, and it turns out it wasn't very difficult, it just took a really long time, and a lot of money. From start to finish, it actually took over four months, but I'm really happy with the result. There wasn't any particular reason for making it, it's just what I'm like. I'm using an Arduino as the brain of the machine, which, if you don't know what that is, it's a very simple microcontroller that you can write and upload code to using a computer, which is then carried out by the Arduino by switching the pins between 0 and 5 volts. For the machine to solve the cube, the Arduino needs to know the starting position of all the colours on the cube. It also needs a way of turning the sides. So, the most obvious thing to begin with is motors and colour sensors. I started by just buying stuff and testing it, playing around with it to see if it would work on the cube. First thing I bought was a colour sensor. Here is the colour sensor. It has LEDs to light up the colours and 64 photodiodes in red, green and blue. Calibrating this sensor was really tricky because I found that very small differences in ambient light changed the frequencies enough that they didn't lie in the range of frequencies I'd set. So for now I decided to not include it in the design and use buttons instead. Now I needed to find the best way of turning the sides of the cube as accurately as possible. The best options seem to be either servos or stepper motors because they both have positional control but a servo is limited to a 180 degree range whereas a stepper motor can keep rotating for as long as you want. Many of the algorithms to solve a Rubik's Cube require the sides to be turned to more than 180 degrees, so it was best to use a stepper motor. The only problem is, they tend to be quite expensive. I bought two of the cheapest ones on Amazon, and tested them to see if they could turn the sides of the cube fast enough. The first stepper motor I bought was very small and relatively cheap for a stepper motor. I quickly 3D printed a part that would connect the motor shaft to the side of the cube and put it on the motor. It worked smoothly, but it wasn't quite strong enough. It would sometimes get stuck, which would mess up the whole cube solving process. The other stepper motor was significantly more expensive, but was stronger and faster. The torque of a stepper motor decreases with RPM, so keeping the speed low keeps the torque high. Although, I wanted the cube to be solved as quickly as possible, so I tried increasing the speed of the motor, but I noticed that sometimes it wouldn't turn exactly 90 degrees, which meant that it might be missing some of the steps. This was probably because it didn't have enough torque. Also, ideally, the motor should have more torque than it needs, just so any small accidental jams don't affect the performance. I bought one more bigger motor with four times the torque and tested it with the same circuit and setup as the previous one. It was perfect, easily strong enough and really fast, so I ordered five more of them. Six motors require a lot of power, so I bought a switching voltage converter which can supply high currents. The voltage converter required fork terminals which needs to be crimped onto the wires. Another problem is that each motor requires a number of signal wires from the Arduino, which means the Arduino doesn't have enough pins for all the components. The biggest Arduino board that I know of is the Arduino Mega, which has 54 digital pins, which would be perfect, so I bought that as well. Ah, good coffee. Now that I had the main components that I'd need to build the machine, I began a design for the frame on a software that I was able to use for free through my uni, called Autodesk Inventor, which is so incredibly useful for 3D printing and generally useful to just visualise designs and make sure they fit together. The design started with a frame onto which I made attachment for the big stepper motors. To have enough space to insert the cube between all the motor shafts, they would need to move outwards, so I had them mounted on bolts, which could be turned by a motor, to shift them inwards and outwards. These bolts are connected by gears to spin exactly the same speed and in sync with each other. The voltage converter, breadboards and circuitry could attach to the side of the frame with nuts and bolts. Since I had tested the smallest motor earlier, I decided to use this one to turn the bolts because they were really cheap. These are added to the wiring diagram like this. I had six buttons, each representing its own colour. I also included a little board for the buttons to sit on in the design. I uploaded the code and tried the function for the blue face. It worked really well, much better than I expected it to. This is the diagram so far, with the buttons included. This is everything that's needed to solve the cube. Now I can manufacture it. I originally intended to 3D print all of it, but it wouldn't fit on my printer bed and I didn't want to split it up into chunks to print separately, so I went online to find other people who could print it for me. However, I then realised that because they were all sheets, I could just get them laser cut, which would be cheaper and easier, because I'd only be using 2D files. I grouped all the part files together in one file and emailed them to various companies online to get a quote. I ended up choosing a company called Laser Lab, primarily because it was the cheapest I could find, but they were very quick and the parts arrived just a few days later. I needed to print some of the complex parts with supports that can easily be removed afterwards.
Motors had really long cables that are trimmed down by cutting and crimping the ends with female jumper attachments. And now to test it! However, after assembling the whole thing, there was a problem, which was that the shaft tube attachments jammed the rotation so much more than I expected. And by this point I'd been working on this for a couple of months and just wanted it to work, so I decided to make attachments with two parts, where a piece is glued onto the actual tube and enables the motor shafts to easily lock on without jamming it. Nice. After days and days of troubleshooting the code, I tested it again. And here it is. Yes! The solving time really depends on the starting configuration of the cube, but it takes around 20 seconds on average. This is pretty good, but it seems quite high considering how fast the motors turn. The limitation is in the way it's coded. It solves the cube by arranging each piece in the same order every time, which means that if there's a quicker way of solving it, it doesn't know what that is, so it just does it the long way every time. The total cost of the project was a whopping £277.19 in total. <sighs> However, this also includes parts that weren't included in the final design, like motors that were bought for testing and colour sensors and stuff. I want to find time to make a second one because it could be better, I think. There could be sensors, there could be faster code. So, hopefully there'll be a part two.